more concerts, ice hockey, ice hockey. H- had you ever been to a uh, a Mobile Mystics game? I was in the Earth Mystics game. No way. Chris, what's happening, dude? How what's you doing, up? man? What's going on? How you liking this cool weather? Hey, it's great, man. I mean, really, low, like, I low 90s, to, uh, baby. I went to Front Yard Tacos the other morning, and, you know, you could almost sit outside again. Yeah, I, I had to – I thought about getting a light jacket yesterday. I was like <laughs> – I was like, man. I was like, man. This is wild. I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing my Mintone hat here. I'm a new, I'm a new fan of Mintone, Alabama. So, I like it. um, we're gonna have, uh, we're, the mobile rundown is gonna write some articles about Mintone and like things to do in Mintone and like weekend getaway trips to Mintone. Fun little trip, man. I googled the population of Mintone. Apparently, is like 300 people or something. <laughs> Is, no, I was like, is this serious? I, like, I, I think that may actually be it. It's right on the edge of Fort Payne, Alabama. Um, so we drove into Fort Payne and like checked out Fort Payne, which has like 10 or 15,000 people, apparently a little downtown. Yeah. Uh, but it's like right on the edge of the Appalachians, man. It's a cool, it's a cool, little town. there's a lot of summer camps up there. I don't know if okay. you know. Yeah. There's like so a, it's a nice of... little place to uh, unplug the phone and, and, and the laptop and get away, right? 100 percent. although you know of course we had wi-fi at the place where we were so yeah um you know so so there's that but um ooh, you're in the you're in the food you're in the food biz i got a note here i gotta ask you All real right. quick so for my entire life i've been calling these trays of meats and cheeses and the assortments i've been calling them charcuterie boards <laughs> And apparently it's sh- charcuterie. Charcuterie, that's it. So it is charcuterie. Okay, so that's I'm it. just so I'm just the lone idiot that's been calling charcuterie. No, that's okay. That's basically. okay. No, is, no, it, no. is it mixed pronunci- pronunciation? Like, do you hear different people saying different things? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. no doubt about it. Okay, so it's officially charcuterie. Yeah, Cheese College. That's one of our stops on the on the BMW Bites tour, and uh, and that's what we have on the tour. You know, is, is the cheese and charcuterie board. That might be the only reason I know how to pronounce it, but uh, got it, got it. <laughs> Every, yeah, when I heard two, I heard two foodies in a row kind of say it. I was like, huh, I should yeah. probably take, I should probably take note <laughs> on how my foodie friends here uh, are uh, are pronouncing are pronouncing this thing. Charcuterie, charcuterie. Now I got it, man. Yeah, uh, I totally got it. All right, um, I tell you what, we've got we've got a story about a hot dog. But I want to. We've got a young guy that's on with us, hanging out, and he's about to go to class, like literally go to class. So let's let's get him on here to chat with All us. All right, let's do it. Avik, Avik, hey, hey man, yeah. how you doing? Good, sir. How are you doing? Doing very well. Thanks for coming on and chatting with us. So we have this show. It's called the Bienville Buzz. We it was called the Chris and Brooks Show, but we just renamed it. Um, we let people mm-hmm. vote what they liked for the name of the show. So it's called the Bienville Buzz. You wrote this book, and I, I know well, I sure. heard about this. Yeah, show us the book. Yeah, it's right here. All right. So what's the name what's the name of the book, Avi? Uh it's called Navigating High School. That's the title. Okay. And uh, the subtitle is A Student's Guide to Achieving Straight A's, Creating an Exciting Social Life and Making the Varsity Team. And the purpose of the book is to simply help, you know, middle schoolers and high school students with their academics in school, uh, build a good social life, and, uh, you know, if they want to make the sports team, how to do so. So that that's really cool. And you wrote it while you were still in high school? Is yes, sir. Right? My uh, my last two years in high school. And so, school. and the reason was, that, like, when I got these information, I, I started applying them, and I could have, like, wrote down what actually worked and what did not, you know, so it was a better method than waiting until after I graduated. That's actually, that's a really good point. I was going to ask you, yeah, like what, what, yeah, what, like what, what inspired you to write a book? Like most people, I yes, feel like sir. write books when they're old. They're like old people, old people write books. <laughs> yes, they, sir. You're so a the young thing guy. Is like, I, I, I actually, uh, I'm so sorry, but like I actually never really uh, want to be a writer, but um, I, I, I want to go into business and engineering, but um, I just felt like, like this resource needed to be out there because, you know, kids struggle a lot in school, you know, and, like, it's not just, like, one problem. There's, like, so many issues regarding school, whether kids are getting bad grades or, you know, they're not um, uh, friends or 
they're they're getting rejected from their sports team every single year. So I I thought you know what I need to create something that can help these kids out and you know help them live a better high school ex uh, life and have a better uh, experience with school. That's awesome, man. Uh, how, how did you get the book published? Well, as of now, uh, it is self-published, but I, I, I actually was invited to the L.A. Festival of Books this year. Uh, they heard about the idea. They loved it. So I'm, I'm thinking about uh, getting it uh, picked up by a traditional publisher once I go there this year. Nice. That, yes, sir. Yeah, that, that's really cool. If uh, the self, Yeah, that's kind of going down a, a, a route. Self-publishing is an amazing – like that wasn't available. Uh, I don't know how many years ago. That wasn't even an option. Now I have I – have, many colleagues who are like self-publishing books sell plenty of books don't need a traditional publisher kind of like mm -hmm. um kind of like the music industry you know um it, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do that but it, it yeah the, the the way technology and publishing works now is is amazing uh yeah sure. and, and the thing is like um a lot of the time like a lot of the famous authors that i know today uh are actually self-published first you know there's this author she, she writes fiction her name is colleen hoover and i read some of her books they were incredible and then you know when I read about her biography, I I turned uh, I found out that she self published her first two books, and you know publishers liked them, so they you know contacted her about getting her next book traditionally published. You know, and there are definitely some benefits to you know self publishing that you can get from traditional publishers, but yeah, I would assume most people uh, uh, who want to uh, go in, in the career of writing would start with self publishing. Uh, yeah, it's like it, it's it's not waiting for. Uh, it's it's not asking permission for someone to like allow you to yeah, do it's, something. It's, it's, it's like, allowing you to take don't action. Don't look for opportunity, create opportunity. That that's how I like to look at it. Chris, Chris, who, you who would you say the book is for? Is it for more for the, the students going into high yes, school? Yes, sir. So, uh, uh, the, the, Yes, sir. So uh, the book, uh, they're, 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 uh, the readers could be two people. It could be the students themselves, obviously, and it could be the parents of the students. You know, the parents of the students could uh, read it and then uh, basically share the information with their children, you know, or maybe other parents in their social group and they can share it with their, uh, their children as well. Exactly. I, I, I'm just sitting here kind of amazed. Chris, are you like the, I, I feel, I feel good for our, um, for our society, uh, with, with young people like you, Avik, to be honest, uh, or, uh, creating, creating content like this. I think it's really cool. Thank you, sir. And speaking of society, this was actually not a, not a project that I myself, uh, have, been a part of i mean yeah i deserve credit for writing it but that's all i deserve credit for all the lessons and all the ideas the principles the techniques all of that in the book uh is because of all the people i've worked with so i have worked with uh, more than 100 straight a students uh popular students and varsity athletes from al almost all the high schools in mobile alabama and in baldwin county and you know for the for uh during the two years i've been working on this i've been interviewing them researching with them i've been you know sending them a lot of questions that, that they send those information back to me. And then, you know, I, I would, uh, I would also do a lot of secondary uh, research, like secondary from secondary sources. Like I would read books on such ideas or I would um, uh, look up online articles. Like I wanted to make sure like every single advice in this book is good. And uh, that's the thing. This was a community project. The entire, uh, many people in Mobile, Alabama and Baldwin County were involved in it. Bravo, okay. man. Bravo! Thank you, sir. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, so I'm we'll we'll put a link we'll put a link to the book like in the in the notes of our show so people can go and find it and uh, and snag Thank themselves you, a copy. Uh, thanks for sharing with us. I know you have to go to class. You're like literally you're in college right now and you're. Uh, I should have some time, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so if do you want to? Uh, oh no, did we lose you? Hold on, he pressed a button. Can you hear mm. us, Abik? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we there can, we go. Yeah. There, I'm there sorry. Go. I, I'm actually recording on my phone if someone calls, so sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no. No, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna let you go to class, but if you want to leave us with any any final thoughts or any, like, major theme of the book or anything that you want folks to know, and then we'll let you, we'll let you get to yes, engineering. Sir. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I, I truly do believe that, you know, this is a book that every student should read because e even the people said like dang i wish i had a book like this in school because even though they have a good academic life they don't have a good social life or maybe they have a good athletic life but their academic life needs a bit, bit of work you know so it's not just like one category like this book is just to help you with good grades or this book is just to help you with uh with the social life 
this book is like anything you can think about in school. Uh, it can help you out with, you know. So and yeah, uh, if you guys want to snag a copy, it, it's available online. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for having me today. It really is a, a an honor. Absolutely. Awesome, All right, Avi. Well, thanks so All much. Right, thanks hey, thank for being you. with us. Thank you so Have a much. great day. Go make good grades. Talk to you soon. Of course. Thank you. <laughs> Chris, I feel I feel uh, I feel positive about society in the future. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, I know you, what you you've got a son that's going through high school. You know, my daughter and kids are kind of coming up. So yeah, that's good. That should be a good resource. That yeah. Young people like that blow me away, and it actually I, – I don't know, man. I was kind of blown away. I don't know him. Uh, just for everyone listening, everyone watching, never never met Avik. I've, uh, we mentioned a book uh, in an article that we had on the Mobile Rundown. He, he, he reached out to me, like I guess somehow found my information. To be honest, the first time I kind of like I – didn't, I didn't respond right away. I didn't have time or whatever. It just got lost in the shuffle. Somehow this this young guy found my number, uh, and he he sent he dropped me a text, and Avik texted me, and he was like, "Hey, this is Avik." I I was like, "Okay." I was like, "Hey, would you want to hop on the show and talk about?" It? He said, "Yeah, absolutely, sure." He he this young guy has tenacity. He was organized enough. Just the fact that he was organized enough to write a book, man, is like amazing. Right, to me. exactly. Um, bravo, I mean, yeah, Avik. If, if you've published a book, you know, before the age of twenty. Um, just imagine he's got 20 more years before it's 40. Exactly. Like if he's going places. Exactly. Avik, remember the little people. Remember the little people. He's got uh he's got sales on here. He's got sales on Amazon. He's got some ratings, he's got great ratings. Um Avik, we're gonna put a link to this. Don't you worry. Go go to class, Rocket. It's gonna be great. Man, okay, that was awesome. That's awesome. That was really cool. Okay. Um you I saw I saw a link from you about a story. Um, a story of someone that proposed, I think, I think this is what happened at a, uh, at a hot dog place. Is that right? There, there, that there's happened? a lot going on with this story for sure. Um, not only are we talking about a hot dog proposal, but Florida man, Florida man has made his way into Alabama. Uh, I'm trying to find the story. I'm going to pull up here while we're chatting so we can get some pictures. Or so, whatever. We've got a guy here, Brad Richardson, uh, proposed to his girlfriend at the whacked out wiener in Foley. Brad is, uh, you know, like I said, from from uh, from Florida. So we got Florida man coming across the border to Alabama with his shenanigans. But um, he, he allegedly he has proposed to his girlfriend at the hot, at the whacked out wiener in Foley. She said yes. Um, they wanted to put Brad's idea was to put the. Uh, put the hot dog in the ring somehow i don't think that worked out for him but uh put the ring put the ring in the hot dog hopefully the, the other way around no it says put the hot dog in the ring <laughs> i was like i was like slide it through the ring <laughs> okay you the man you're the you man the story that's what, i had to read it twice but it's a, you're, you're like that's not a typo the hot dog through the ring God. but it wouldn't fit so he had to cut it between the hot dogs uh uh okay 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 well, hold on. let's see we got another picture here let's see here oh uh, okay there it is it's sitting it's sitting in the chili there man look at that look at that sitting right there in the chili yes sir what we got here okay whacked out wiener okay they got some free t-shirts out of it the, the owners gave us some t-shirts uh to win okay for being a, you know that, that's that's a loyal fan right there that is definitely a loyal fan that's a that's a lover that's a lover of the hot dog man is what, yes, is it is. what that is that yes, is, a is. Lo- as a lover of the hot dog, and, and as, as a food guy, that is, you know, congratulations to Brad and, and Brooke. Way to go, y'all! Way to go, <laughs> y'all! We're cheering y'all on. I don't know how to. I'd love to tag them in this video. I don't know how to find them. But that's okay. Um, but that's all good. All right, there was another. Let's see. We had some other. We have a lot of note. We have a lot of notes that we've been we've been pulling up. Um. What do you think we should talk about next? There's like all kinds of stuff I feel like we see on a daily, yeah, weekly basis. Yeah, well, I think, basis. you know, with Beamble Buzz being the name of our show, I think we, we, we have to probably give a Beamble Square update. Um, okay. So yeah, they, good call. They have, um, the, the park is closed right now. They have officially started work. Um, it's been about three years in the making. You know, we won't go down that rabbit hole. But, um, you know, finally uh, work has begun on Beamble Square. 
and the renovations there. So they've completely torn apart, you know, where the old fountain was right there. And they're complex that's what they're doing right now, working on that. And um, so a, a tree fell a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you saw the story about the tree that fell. Yes. Um, and come to find out, well, they had put concrete on top of it. Yes. And, um, it's a crazy, man. That. It's crazy. Yeah, here's here's a picture right here. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, cra- it's definitely crazy, huh? Maybe I can just zoom in on that one. Yeah, so here's that one. Um, yeah, that's so wild. I, I think what I read in the article or in the post or whatever was that it was a pretty normal practice, like maybe 20 or 30 years ago or something or, and beyond like right. when the, tr- when the trees, if they had a hollow cavity or whatever, they would fill them with concrete or stones or rock or whatever. Um, yeah. apparently, apparently that practice has since stopped. Apparently they don't do that anymore. Um, but yeah, that that is a wild. This is a wild image right here. Uh, yeah, it is from the tree at Bimble. Yeah, we just drove. We drove by it yesterday. Uh, yeah, we actually drove by it yesterday, and I was like, "Yep, yep, it, yep, yep." It's closed. Uh, it's that's that's been a wild project. Um, well, I think you and I were talking about the fountain like months ago. We were like, "Wait a minute, the, the fountain's yeah. been gone for like years or something." <laughs> like, it has, yeah. Like it's been going a long time and it was supposed to be basically sandblasted and brought back. Now, maybe it, now I don't know. Maybe there's been some notes on this or, or why it, maybe it wasn't brought back because they knew that this was going to happen, um, which would make sense. I don't, I don't know that information. Do, do, do you know that information? Like, did you ever read anything about why it didn't, <laughs> why it didn't come back? I think it's just, uh, you know, I think it's just government, uh, you know, the, the whole process of getting things approved and, all that yeah. kind of stuff just takes so much time. And I think they got, I got ahead of themselves with, you know, they sent, like, so they sent the fountain off pretty, uh, pretty quickly and it was finished and, and it was completed in, in a very timely uh, fashion, but the rest of the whole project, you know, where they're going to redo the sidewalks and the park benches and, uh, you know, supposedly put up like a wall with some azaleas and it's supposed to be, you know, like, very representative of Mobile when they get done with it, hopefully next year or so. I mean, that is, um, yeah, I mean, that'd be great. That is like the kind of the meeting square in Mobile, right? Like you, uh, you know, you have that and you have Cathedral Square, probably the biggest two that are in, in the center of, in the center of downtown. Obviously we have yeah. other great green spaces, but, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty important for that one to be like, that one to be on point. Yeah. That one's gotta be, that's gotta be our, I mean, that's our centerpiece of downtown. That's got, that one's gotta be, you know, it's gotta be impressive, especially, you know, for so many out of towners that are, you know, walking from the hotels over town to the restaurants and stuff like that, like that, that's yeah. gotta be our showcase. You know, that can't be, uh, it, it can't be, uh, a, a, you know, a, a C rated park. That's gotta be, that's gotta be our best. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, um, yeah, we even made a joke. I, this is like six months ago. We even made a joke about like spy balloons stealing the Beemel <laughs> square fountain or something on, on the mobile rundown because, uh, I don't know. I was just like, where is this thing? You know what I mean? We were like, we were like, where is this fountain? Uh, why is it not back yet? No yeah, one's and, talking and about like it. Said, at that time, nobody had talked about it. Yeah. No, it nobody like, in the media had ever said like, where'd the fountain go? Where is it at? Where has it been? Yeah, it, it, exa- exactly. I don't know. I don't know if people just, I don't know, just kind of sidetracked them. <laughs> they didn't think about it or maybe they knew something we didn't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure the answer there, but yeah. So good update on Bienville Square. Oh yeah. So uh, everyone now has figured out. Yeah. So the Bienville the Bienville Buzz is the current name of the show. No longer the Chris and Brooks Show. Uh, although maybe we'll still call it that. Probably um, Chris and Brooks Show. The Bienville Buzz. So a- AI chose our name, and the people have voted. Uh, the Bienville Buzz got astounding number of more votes than I forgot. I already forgot what the sec. That that's how that's how un- non memorable. <laughs> the other choices, I can't even. I can't even think of what the other choice is. Do, do you remember? Like Bullfuss, Gab or something like that. Nah, maybe no. sips, sips, and uh, yeah, not memorable. Yeah, not not, not memorable. memorable at all. The the Bimbo Buzz was memorable. I like uh, it. Okay, here's another here's another article I want to throw up uh, that I saw that we that we popped in here. Uh, Ao.com's got this article. More concerts, ice hockey, ice hockey. H- had you ever been to a uh, a Mobile Mystics game? I was in, at the first your... Mystics game. No way. Really? I was at the very first Mystics game. Yes, sir. I used to go. Yeah, it was, it was, I used to go all the time. I was a pretty big sports guy. You know, really? Still am, but but uh, yeah. yeah, 
Yeah, I used to go a lot. Love, hey, love like, going to the Mystics games. You're like tried and true fan, man. That's amazing. I, I oh, went yeah. to oh, yeah. I went to some of the games. Yeah, I knew nothing about ice hockey. Like, <laughs> did did you know the sport? No, no, not did not know the sport until I, you know that was probably around the same time that uh, the Mighty Ducks were pretty popular. Yeah, in, in, in my brain anyway, and so. I probably knew everything about I did about ice hockey from the Mighty Ducks movies. Yeah. Um, so that might have taught me a little bit, but just going to the games and stuff, you can catch on pretty quickly about the rules and. But uh, man, hockey's a really exciting sport. Yeah, I, I I remember uh, I remember going and uh, I remember going to the games. I remember my dad taking me. I mean, like we like we were young. I mean, I don't yeah. I don't even know. Wasn't this in the nineties? Ninety five, I think, was the first. The Mystics. Year. Okay. Yeah, okay. Ninety five. And they left in 02. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, I mean, I'm talking. I'm in like fifth grade, sixth grade, or something, or whatever. Yeah. And I, I just remember getting pumped up about the fights, man. I was like, Dad, yes, yeah, they're fighting. Yes. They're fighting, Dad. Yes, another fight broke and out. Like and we had yeah, they, they sent him to the timeout bench, you know, and uh, everybody's cheering. Yeah, that was good stuff. We that was all we knew. Uh, that and what the score was. We had we had no. <laughs> We just we didn't know beyond that, man. We didn't. We just didn't know beyond that. All right, let me put this uh put this article back up here. So is this um is this like official official approval? Do you know? Right, I, I, yeah, I don't it's know. Official. Yeah, it got official approval. We're recording on Wednesday. This was uh, Tuesday. They got official approval to go ahead and uh go ahead and, and and start the start the process of you know putting out bids and and that kind of stuff. So um, man, this is it. Yeah, it's gonna be nice. So okay, so when we say official, so we mean like uh, the plans and all the ideas and kind of some drawings. Yep. Yeah, that the drawings the, the, have been done. All drawings are all approved. The, uh, yeah. Now it's okay. just to a point. You could, I guess, is it under a paywall now? <laughs> but no, uh, no, I don't know. I was just scrolling while you're chatting. <laughs> a couple of days ago, that was not under a paywall, but I guess it is now. Oh um, wait, is it? <laughs> oh wait! <laughs> wait, wait, oh, there, no, it no. there it is. Okay. No, wait, here it is. Here's the here's the article. What is that? I guess they're I guess they're just promoting us as a as a reader, right? There you go. Ten bucks but, a month, hundred dollars annual. They saw yeah, the, they saw land. Yeah, the, they're like land. Yeah, it's got something going on here. We're uh yeah, we're about to matter of time. We're about to get up in that. Yeah, exactly. So that yeah, okay, I mean, you okay. know, talking about the they're gonna start. I know they're starting to work on the uh, the parking garage. It's gonna be there. That's already you know about to start. Um, yeah. So the exactly. parking lot's gonna be you know pretty much KO'd for Mardi Gras in the next couple of years. But um, I think twenty twenty six or so. I think is when they're talking about this. This should be wrapped up. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, and, and just my opinion, hopefully, you know, they get somebody else to kind of run that and bring in some like I said, concerts and, you know, man, if they could, you know, bring in an ice hockey team or, you know, something cool like that. Hopefully we get some, at least some monster truck shows or, you know, some things like that that would, uh, you know, make it worth going to. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's um, definitely, I think, I think everyone knew that, like, something needed to be done there you know what i mean like i think the whole i think the whole community was like yeah yeah we gotta do something um i think i think the hard part was just figuring out like and everyone's not gonna be happy you're never gonna make everyone happy of course at the end of the day um and of course we have to see the whole project through to be able to look back honestly you gotta you gotta fast forward like 10 years to be like hey that was a great investment or whatever yeah. i mean like you know just like in 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 real time i, I just feel like you never like no one's ever 100 percent happy you know, like they don't get what they, they don't get what they want always or whatever. But I think we all could agree that something needed to be done to that whole, that whole entire area. Right. Yeah. And, and Mobile, we're too big of a city to not have a, a nice arena with a, with a nice, you know, we, we should be having concerts. We should be having, we, we need a venue that's, that's large enough for stuff like that. Totally, totally agree, man. Totally agree. Okay, um, I want to move to un unless you have something. I'll no, go ahead. ahead. Okay, i I wanted to I want to hear about this uh, the state tourism, the industry, uh, the tourism industry in the state, and you went to something for the last three days, basically, like you just got done. So all this is like this is fresh on your 
fresh on your mind, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, last three days, I was at the uh, the Alabama conference of um, uh, the governor's conference of tourism, and um, and so you know they it was over in Point Clear. Um, there was a lot of panels, a lot of panel discussions and stuff like that about tourism in the state. You know, of course, the state. You know, they presented you know the tourism numbers and twenty two million people uh, you know visited Alabama this year. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, almost half of those numbers were Mobile and Baldwin County alone. You know, really? so that's that is insane to think about. The two coastal counties make up half the tourism uh, numbers for the entire state. Um, interesting, so it's, interesting. It's a, it's, it's a good time to be, you know, especially if you're in the tourism industry in in South Alabama. Um, the governor, she came and spoke on Monday, and just kind of, you know, just kind of gave us our well wishes, and um, you know, so that was that 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 was pretty cool to be in the same room with her and. And like I said, you know, kind of hear what she got to say and just kind of congratulate everybody on, you know, for doing the good job. Um, it, it was pretty, you know, just despite, you know, your political opinions, uh, every year that she's been in office, the mm-hmm. state tourism numbers have grown by one billion, one billion dollars every year she's been in office, um, except really? for the COVID year, which was kind of, a, you know, the outlier. But um, so, yeah, yeah. So I, th- I think, you know, good stuff there. Um, like I said, good time to be in tourism in South Alabama, for sure. And people are coming to Mobile, and they're coming to Baldwin County. So, we'll talk about you know, field, uh, talk about kind of some of the future things as well. Got it. Yeah, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I mean, obviously the beach, the beach is, gets like, the, the bulk of those numbers, I'm sure. But like, but oh, that's yeah. the like, but that, that's like the beautiful uh, the beautiful coattail, like I'm not gonna say coattails, but like the the wave, like ride the beach wave. Like how can you ride that wave in order to, like some people are dedicated to Mobile for certain of those things. Like you mentioned the Clotilda and then like certain things we have going on. Obviously, obviously Mardi Gras season um, That's is it. pretty, pretty giant. That's a big one. Yeah. But then the question, but you know, I, I think the question is like, how can you, how can you ride the wave of the beach tourism to sidetrack? So, you know, I like, like I, I knew the folks that used to run the um, the ducks, like the Gulf Coast ducks, uh, and that is like literally was their strategy was like a t- basically targeting people that were on their way, flowing through from west to east, flowing through Mobile, and all they had to do is get a, a piece of those people to stop right. and 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 take their break here. Uh, and do the do an overnight here rather than whatever you know Pensacola or whether or pushing on through um, down to the beach or whatever their destination wasn't necessarily Mobile but you know the question is like cool how can we get just a fraction of those people to stop in Mobile and that yeah, that's right if you, and if you can figure that out like that helps everyone right you have a food tour business. Um, you have everything, right? Everybody wins. Hotels win, restaurants win, bars win. Everything in the downtown vicinity um, is a is a winner. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't. I'm not necessarily creating a, a call to action or have a, a point or a question, other than like if if people can figure that out, like that benefits all parties. You know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's millions of people, like I said, passing through on their way home on their way to the beaches to and from um i think mobile we've got to make mobile a desirable place to stop and um you know people are seeing it slowly but um you know i think hopefully we're on i think we're on the right track for sure and i think it's only going to continue to uh you know once we move the airport um you know hey at the civic center you know so stuff like that um, yeah that, that those are little things if amtrak wants to come here um, you know, those little things like that are, are going to be, uh, are going to be big for us long term. That's a good point. Do you know, I, I haven't heard Amtrak, the updated Amtrak news. Do I, I feel like it's kind of in limbo. Do you have, have yeah, you latest any? news is, uh, well, they do have a name for the, for the, for the train. Uh, it's going to be called the Mardi Gras. So that's pretty really? cool. Okay. Yep. I didn't know that. All right. Yep. So, it'd be, you know, like I said, it'd be from Mobile to New Orleans, um, uh, every 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 stop is ready to go. So New Orleans has got their train station they've had forever. Yep. Uh, the stops in Mississippi have got their train stations ready. Basically, they're just waiting on Mobile. And got Mobile it. does not have a train stop. Um, 
for some reason we can't figure that out. But um, uh, it, it, as soon as they, you know, kind of figure out a train stop for Mobile, a train station kind of thing, a like platform is basically what it's going to be. Um, from there, I think they'll be, they're, they're pretty much ready to go. Yeah. Interesting. I, yeah. I wonder. Um, yeah. And I don't know the, the hang up. Is it, is it, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit political, um, sure. especially when it comes to the state docks who can, who have, uh, a lot of that railroad, you know, they are, they're owned by CSX. So you're, you're Got dealing it. with, uh, you get permission from CSX, you're getting permission to uh, bring these Amtrak trains in at the same time the state docks is bringing their trains in. So I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of button heads right there with that. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Would you guys, uh, do you think you guys would use that service to take a train? Like Mobile, uh, New yeah, Orleans? I think so, okay. For sure. I think, yeah, go over to New Orleans. It's going to be a, um, uh, what four, uh, it's going to be two trips. So it'll be, you know, it'll be a trip in the morning and a trip in the afternoon. Nice. Um, I, I think for sure. I think a day trip over to New Orleans, take the family over there and, you know, check it out. Just, I, I've got a little nostalgia in me anyway for about riding a train. I'm all about riding a train. So exactly, like like for me, that's what it's all about. I'm like, I don't even, I'm not even the biggest fan of like New Orleans, I, you know, personally yeah, yeah. Like to to go visit. But I'm, but I will totally get on the train when the train. Right. Like, like we will, we will totally plan a trip, um, just just to be able to hop on the train and just look out the windows and hang out and you know, and then uh, now I'm I not going to use it right as well, uh, you know, for Saints fans. Uh, man, if that train leaves here at eight o'clock in the morning, you know, you can be at the stadium by 12 for a 12 o'clock game, um, go to the game. You could probably go get something to eat and be back in, you know, for the train to load back up to Ward Mobile, say six o'clock that evening, you know, um, and be Good back point. here in Mobile at eight o'clock or something, nine o'clock, something like that. Good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't see us using it as like a normal commute type thing but but for people that go to new orleans a lot uh you're you're right on about that man um yeah absolutely that's the that's the point that's the point for it yeah um okay uh one of the one of the last things i have i want to switch gears like you uh you had a cool conversation with mr to me at uh to me's mardi gras that runs the mardi gras store in uh in mobile and i heard some interesting things there family business is uh Let's see if I can recall some things. His dad helped start, uh, I think, Crew Columbus or something. No, no, his, yeah. gra his granddad. Grandfather. Yes, that's his right. grandfather. His grandfather. Yeah. He's yeah. like a founding. So, so, so they're like entrenched with uh, Mardi Gras, which is pretty wild. Um, I made a note here because one of the things I was like, what? This is crazy. We're asking about, uh, we're asking about, you were asking about moon pies. You're like, ah, yeah, like, how many do you sell? And he's like, ah, I don't know, like 10, 10 tractor trailer loads, or I, which I guess is a container. I, I think he meant that's like a that's container, right? right? Yeah, a it's a container like, just on the back of an 18 wheeler. Yeah. Exactly. So he's like, 10 tractor trailer loads. He's like, I don't know. It's like 24 pallets fit in each one. And he's like, I don't know how many you get on the pallet. And I, I'm sitting there thinking, like, this is this is insane. Like 10 containers full of uh of moon pie. And that's just one, yeah. that's just one skew. That's like one item. Uh that he that he sells right? right um and he also mentioned the, the uh the uh the, the the peanut butter moon pie that they stopped making i was always wondering what's the deal man that that's one of my favorites that peanut butter crunch and then but the peanut I, allergy I missed that, that totally makes sense. i miss the peanut butter you never somehow. had that one no oh, i never man. had that one yeah it's it's good it's good although i am a fan of that mint one as well that he that he also yeah. talked about the uh the mint one i do like the i do like the mint one as well like something about that crunch in that uh in that moon pie yeah. is pretty solid uh what was like what was one of your takeaways of getting to connect with them something that maybe you just like took away or or, or learned or whatever yeah i mean i knew the facility was massive you know he said it's seventy thousand square feet the mass so the facility is massive and i guess i just really didn't realize the year round operation that that is and the logistics that go into a year round, you know, he said he's got trucks that are being delivered every week, um, throughout the year. Um, he had just got back from China where he went to, you know, some of the factories over there and, uh, you know, making relationships. So he's getting a lot of the, the trinkets and that kind of stuff, you know, and, and of course the beads and all that directly from, you know, the manufacturer in China. Um, so I, th I thought that was pretty interesting and as well as, um, he mentioned that he, uh, uh, has a relationship with Bucky's. And uh, so if you see anything Mardi Gras related in Bucky's, you know, the beads or uh, anything with the Bucky Beaver with Mardi Gras, uh, that came from, you know, uh, from Toomey's. 
Um, but I think the, the biggest thing that I was blown away with was Tampa, Florida being his biggest customer. And, uh, yep. and it's sort of yep. a Gasparilla. I was not familiar. I, I never heard of it. Heard about it. Maybe, I've never heard of it. No. I, I, and so it's like a, it's like a big celebration down there that they do in January and February. And uh, it's these pirate festivals. And uh, so it's, it's basically Mardi Gras on a pirate ship. And uh, I, got, I don't know about you, man, but I got to get down there and check that out. <laughs> you got to get a store opening up. He just bought out a, a warehouse or bought out a, um, a, a somebody down there where there's going to be a Toomey's in Tampa. And like I said, that's his biggest customer. So, I mean, that, that's saying something right there. I heard him say that as well. And I was like, interesting. You know, you would never think it, right? Honestly, you know, I drive, like, this This is a true testament of, like, don't judge a book by its cover, right? Because you dri- I drive by, if I pass the Toomey store, I'm like, well, who's who's going there? Like, if it's not, it's not Mardi Gras season, right? I'm like, who, who would, who would be stopping by Toomey's? Well, it's a giant, it's a giant warehouse that can ship out whatever or take orders or it can take walk-in traffic. And they probably have, according to y'all's conversation, like months to like prep for Mardi Gras. It's, it's a, yeah, it's a, that building is needed, whether, uh, whether a person walks off the street or not, probably like they need their operation like year round. Um, yeah. So I thought that was a cool one. Just kind of, they added extra really you know like i said you know he gotta have that warehouse space for, yeah. for all the things he's selling the boom pies and the beads and all that stuff and um so like, but the, the storefront's pretty cool too you know and i got a chance it, it is it was kind of interesting i went in there and um you know there's not a lot of there, there was a few people shopping and stuff for different things but yeah this is a good time to go in there if you're looking for you know some kind of mardi gras item you know man go in there in august and september when uh you know, you can kind of, you can beat the crowd and, and check out some of the things that he's got without, uh, without fighting a lot of big crowds. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. It's like they have the footprint may as well, uh, may as well open the door to people and let people walk yeah. in and peruse. Right. And so they get uh, bus tours, like, you know, people, you know, big passenger buses, they'll, they'll drop them off right there, you know, coming, coming through mobile. Um, that's one of their stops. So they'll go in there and, you know, get some moon pies and uh, grab some beads and stuff like that. And before they get back to the road, going back to wherever they're from, interesting i could see that being huge yeah uh, so like people how, from uh, for example i think missouri you know a bus a bus coming down to missouri they i think they went down to you know went down to the coast or something like that you know yeah and spent the night there or on their way back to missouri stopped by toomey's and you know kind of got to experience a little bit of mardi gras you know what i mean outside of uh outside of mardi gras season so is that something that like the Toomey store is like orchestrating or is that something that those people just like Googled and found? I think? I think, yeah, I think that that was something they probably researched. Probably the person who uh, is in charge of their trip and in charge yeah. of their itinerary. And they okay. may be in contact with the city or somebody mm-hmm. with the city on that too, or with the, you know, visit mobile or somebody like that who may help yeah. you say, Hey, you know, if you got a big bus, you know, uh, no, we don't have any Mardi Gras parades. But maybe consider going stop by Toomey's and, and, and stop them there and get some more and get some moon pies and and and, and like I said, check out the store. Yeah, let Mardi Gras come to you. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's interesting, man. That's interesting. Okay. Well, that's solid, man. Well, what uh man, I feel great. I feel like we've covered a I feel like we've covered a lot today, man. Yeah, uh, that's the stuff. If you have um if you have any final thoughts, let me know. Otherwise, we'll we'll uh we'll sign off. Let me know. Sounds good. Yeah, that's it, man. That's good. The good stuff for today. Um, All right, sweet. Definitely got to check out that book. I'm excited about uh, Avik and uh, and excited about that book. He makes me proud, man. It's so good. All right, well, cool. Yeah. We'll stick, stick around for a second, man. We'll chat for just a second, and we'll see you guys on the next one. All right, see you.